Hey everyone, welcome to Coffee and Darts. This is episode 43. We've got Louis Williams with us. Um, he recently signed with Target. He's with the Elite One Grew Grew group over at Target Darts. And so he'll be joining us here in just a few minutes. Uh, we're going to talk some darts with him. We're going to talk about being a youth in the darts, um, what the Elite One program is, and things going forward for him. But before we get into that, I do want to thank my sponsors, uh, Shot Darts. As you guys know, Shot Darts does sponsor the Coffee and Darts show. Uh, really a big fan of Shot. They've been around for 50 years now. This is their 50th year anniversary. So check out Shot Darts at shotdarts.com. Also want to give a big shout out to Magic Wear for the wonderful jersey that I'm wearing. And uh, you should check out their jerseys for yourself, individual, personal, for team wear, and all of that fun stuff. All right, let's go ahead and bring on Louie, and we'll just get into the darts conversation. Hey, Louie, how's it going? Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. Um, so you're in the UK. Uh, it's it's evening time for you, so we won't take up too much time because I know you got to get to dinner and all that fun stuff. Um, wh- let's just do the first question. You know, this question everybody always asks is, how did you get into darts? What got you into it? Um, I think it's mostly my dad that got me into darts. Uh, I've watched it since a young age on TV. Uh, every year we watch the World Championships and all the other TV tournaments um, since I was at least about four or five years old. But um, I only started playing darts when I was done the pub with my dad. Uh, my football was called off, so we were watching football on TV, the Premier League. Um, we decided there was a set of darts on the table, we decided to have a little throw. Um, just started really enjoying it and then a few of the locals started watching me, uh, so I went down there more often. And they just asked me to join the team. Uh, the local pub team. Um, so I, I joined that and started playing week in, week out there. Nice. Nice. So I got to ask, because um, I don't, we didn't talk about this and I'm, I'm not sure. How old are you currently? Uh, 18. 18. Okay. So you're still kind of a, a, a youngin there as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, that's cool. Um, so you're, you're 18. You're you're thriving in this sport. You you did really really well at a particular tournament this past year. Um, the uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? I mean, could you talk a little bit about it? what was that like? Um, I, I, unbelievable. I'll be honest here. It was a pretty unbelievable experience. So see, it was my first UK Open, so it was my first major PDC event. Um, it was just, unbelievable experience. It's hard to put into words how it felt at the time. Um, but yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Nice. Um, I mean, yeah. What was it like going up against some of that talent being 18? I mean, let's be honest. Some of the talent that you, you know, that that's there is old enough to be your parents. Um, what's that like? Cause it, for me, I've never had that opportunity. Um, you know, I got into darts. I was older. I've never had, you know, I wasn't a youth, so to speak. What's it like when you step up to the hockey and you're you're looking at someone who's who's you know old enough to be your your, your dad? Um, to be honest, I, I don't I don't find it too different. I just find it obviously when people play me, it's kind of like nobody wants to lose to a youngster and all that. So I kind of feel like the pressure's off my shoulders and more on their shoulders. So I just try and play the board as much as I can. Try not to focus who I'm playing, whether I'm playing Michael Van Gerwen or if I'm playing on a Thursday night on the pub. I always treat every game the same, so it doesn't really matter who you play. I just kind of keep keep my focus on the dartboard. Yeah, so for you, it's not so much the age thing as much as it may be for them, where they're like, "Okay, I'm playing this kid. I'm supposed to beat him. You know, yeah. um, you know, I've got more experience on him." Um, so for you, it's it's kind of a relief in a sense. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like I said, the pressure is mostly on them and not me, so I can just go up there have a clear mind and just play my own darts. So it's, it's just nice. It's, it's nice having the opportunity to play, obviously, the older players, the better players. And I'm, I'm just loving every minute of it. Nice. Nice. Do you um, – uh, so you signed with Target, with the Elite squad. Tell me about that. Like, uh, how did that transpire? Um, I think they were keeping an eye on me a little bit just uh, when I started getting – improving my darts when I was in the UK Open. Um, obviously qualifying for it, playing in it. Then a few, a few decent runs in the development tour earlier on the year. 
Um, so I think they'll be keeping a close eye. And then obviously during lockdown, target held a you know, home Premier League. Um, obviously it's not online. Uh, I ended up finishing first in the league in that. And then they got in touch with me and said, we'll sort something out after after lockdown. I ended up going down, meeting all the team. Everyone's, everyone's superb down there, they're lovely. And I couldn't be happier, couldn't be happier to be signed by one of the biggest arts manufacturing companies in the world. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's cool. I, I just think about it and I'm like, what's that got to be like for Target to be like, hey, we want to bring you into our stable. You're 18 years old. And I mean, the, the amount of growth that's potential. I mean, look at Phil Taylor. I mean, he's not a youngster. Think of the many years, if you were to stick through the sport that you would have. Um, I don't know how much you think down the road about that. Like, you know, you could do 30, 40 years of darts. I mean, do you ever think about that? Um, maybe, maybe kind of a little bit, but I just try and I just try and focus on kind of like my next thing at the minute. So yeah, I've, I've signed for signed for three years, so I'm just going to concentrate on this year, then concentrate on the next, then concentrate on the next, and take it as it comes, and hopefully progress even higher and get to the, eventually get to the top. Very cool. So, what does that basically get you being signing with a you know target for elite? I mean, <coughs> excuse me, I know like Leighton you know, boom, boom, got his own barrel and all that. But do you guys get an opportunity to create a barrel? It might not be something that's sold, but do they work with you actually creating a barrel? Uh, yes. Well, so I, when I went down there, uh, I kind of sat down with all the marketing team. And I took my own set of darts down and showed them, like, all my dimensions, the weights. Uh, they measured everything up. So they've, they've already started um, kind of making a barrel that's near enough exactly the same, so I don't want too much changes. And obviously, eventually, once I get settled with the set, they'll make a few more of them, and maybe eventually sell them on the website as well. Very cool, very cool. So you've got you've got your set of barrels that you feel real comfortable with. Um, how's that been? I mean, how what was the process like? I mean, I've talked to a couple of different darts players, and the, you know, the process is always different for them. Sometimes it's we sit down and here it just works, um, and then of course there's the Peter Snake bites that. Ever, are ever changing how many renditions what was the, the did it happen in a day did it take some time uh to be honest it was pretty straightforward in myself um because they're, they're all spot on down there and it's absolutely unbelievable how, how they do it i was shot myself um but i just kind of said, said the design i wanted and they got on with it and just really ways to do things very cool. Very cool. So you have your set of, of barrels currently. Yes. So I've got, got, a, uh, got, a, got a set for now. Obviously, I'll get the practicing with them. And if I like them, I'll say that's the set I want to, that's the set I want to continue with. If not, uh, they'll make it a different set and then make it kind of perfect. So they're, they're really good at it. Nice. Nice. Well, I'm glad that you got to sign with them. What's it like working with uh, Daryl Finton? Um, have you had an opportunity really? Because I know it was under – covid that this all took place have you had an opportunity to work with him or talk with him uh yes so i've met i've met daryl a few times and on scotty so he's amazing and he does an absolutely amazing job with old Dilly. um any anything you ask for he'll sort out straight away he's always there he's always looking monitoring always checking up on us um yeah yeah i've, I've, I've practiced a lot with nathan aspinall and daryl come up uh one of the days just to sort everything out have a quick chat obviously he's socially distancing of course um, but yeah, we had a really good chat about everything, about the future and what's going on, and yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Cool. So you've been able to work with the ASP. I'm a huge ASP fan. I don't know many darts players I'm not a huge fan of to some degree because I like little aspects of all of them. But I, I really like his his demeanor at the Aki and his design. He's got that I'm going to crush you mentality. And for me, that's a big thing in sports. I love that. What's it been like playing with him? Um, at first, it was kind of like a little, maybe a little bit of shock. But um, obviously, we're sponsored by the same management company. So ever, ever since I've been signed for him, we'd be practicing together twice a week, every week. Uh, obviously, when he hasn't got big tournaments on, why not away? Um, but yeah, it started off as a big shock. But since then, we've just got closer and closer, not just, like, not just as friends or not just as dark players. We just gelled really well, and it, it's really good for both of us. As we always have good games, we're always beating each other, and it's a it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity. Nice. Now I, I understand that he was working a little with uh, Peter Snakebite for a while there. 
Um, has that rubbed off, you know, some of what he's learned there? Has that rubbed off for you? Yes, I, I, I suppose so, because I suppose you, you can learn a lot from obviously all different players. That's why it's nice to mix things up and practice with different players. And you can always learn the different stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely, he, he's taught me a lot. Um, like I see my game improving, um, as, as it has been for the past six six to 12 months. So I'm really, really happy I was going. It's nice to have the opportunity to play with players like Nathan. Nice. Here's a question that has come in from Flo. It says, do you have some advice for players that are struggling for months? Someone that's like struggling with their game, maybe not getting any advancement in their game. Um, yeah, kind of. So going back about 15 to 16 months ago, I, I was struggling myself. Um, didn't really want to play darts much anymore. And I ended, ended up moving away, moving houses with the family. Um, I said I wasn't going to pick up another set of darts again, but I just kind of, I, I knew I loved darts, so I wanted to carry on with it anyway. So I bought a totally new set of darts, kind of just changed a little few things, tweaked, tweaked things up, changed my throw slightly, not not too much. And just, just started practicing a lot more. And when I didn't put too much pressure on myself, and I knew I just wanted to have a laugh, practice in my room, and that's just what I wanted to do. And then I felt myself improving from there when the pressure was lifted off type of thing. Yeah, I'll say um, as someone who's been in sports uh, a lot during my life, playing a number of different sports um, and and darts in itself, you're going to have moments where you're just not feeling it. And you, in, in a sense, you hate the sport. I always believe that you, you keep tweaking a little, you keep practicing it, and then you'll have a day or a moment where you'll do really well. You'll hit a 140 or a 180 or something where you feel good and you just walk away at that moment. You don't keep throwing darts because that's what we're talking about. You would, you know, you would just walk away and be content with, okay, I did well. I'll come back tomorrow because you'll hit the 140 and the next thing you know, you'll hit 626s and you'll be like, crap, I suck. Um, so that's always been a thing for me. What's practice like for you? Um, I, I know a lot of players are different. Uh, some players enjoy practicing, some players don't enjoy it as much. But on, honestly, I, I really enjoy practicing whether I'm on my own or with obviously players like Nathan. I, I enjoy it either way because I, I never put too much pressure on myself. I never say, right, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. I just, I'll just go up to the dartboard, have a few hours, I'll throw, play a few different games, and just, just enjoy it, put some music on, have, have a clear mind. Yeah, I've talked with a number of different professional players, and I'm surprised at how many say they don't practice. But then I've talked to some people. I mean, like, take Phil Taylor, for example. We were talking about this earlier. Um, he, his belief is practice, 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 uh, and that's how you get better. You know, he's, he's in the mentality of the 10,000 hours. You've got to put in to get out. Um, is that kind of where your mentality is right now? Yeah, definitely, 110%. Um, I've always watched Phil since a young age, and I just love the way he is. Um, obviously, I can imagine millions of other people who play darts always look up to Phil just from his dedication, his commitment, the way he is, the way he goes about darts. Like like you said, you you get you get out what you put in. You know what I mean? So yeah, that, that that's where I'm at at the minute. I know I need to work hard for to get up to the top where I want to be. Yeah. Do you ever feel? Uh, and I know I'm sitting on practice because that seems to be a big question for a lot of people. Is like how much does a professional actually practice? I think we all get kind of shocked when we talk to to people or hear professionals say, "Oh, you know what? I do like a half hour a day," and we're all like, "I'm trying to practice three hours." Do you find you know practice? You're enjoying it, but is it more an enjoyment because you're doing it with friends uh, and other players, or do you dive into it by yourself and really hammer away? Um. I, either way, really, either way, enjoy it. Like it's, it's always nice to have someone to practice with. I mean, because you can talk to each other, have a little laugh in between. Um, but either way, even when I practice on my own, I'll put some music on. Um, either put, put some darts on the TV or something, and just just, just get on them, throw, throw darts. Tell that's, that's what I enjoy doing. I love throwing darts. Um, so yeah, I just enjoy it myself. All right, and a question, another question that came in, of course, practice tends to be the thing. Is what are some of the best practice games according to you? Um, or what are ones that you find to be most helpful or fun? Um, to be fair, I've, I've always liked doing, I've seen the, obviously the, the JDC virtuals where you've got to do the Shanghai's. 
Um, I've, I've done them for a few years anyway, so I've, I've always enjoyed doing that because it's practicing all different segments around the board. Um, obviously, I like going online, too, too little darts apps where you can play against a level around the computer. Um, I enjoy doing them. Also, um, so it's, it's a few different games really, like uh, tons. If you hit a 180, you've got three points. If you hit a 140, you've got two points. If you've got 100, you get one point. And try and get up to 21 in as many as at least darts as you can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a fun one. I've got I've got one for you because my son created this. Uh, so my six year old, <laughs> who absolutely loves darts, and like we were mentioning before, he's beat me twenty seven times, um, and he'll he he remembers them all. Um, he came up with this game called the Cereal Challenge. We take little bits of cereal, Cheerios, typically, and we will we'll stick them to the dartboard. Um, you can use tape or a little nail or something, and we will try and hit the piece of cereal. Um, and I actually did a video on that and he hit the piece of cereal before I did. It's a ton of, it's much harder than you would think, uh, to do it. It's kind of cool. Cause the cereal explodes as you hit it with the dart. Um, I have told him that I will bring that up as much as I can during the show. So you may want to try the cereal challenge. Um, I'll, it's I'll actually kind of fun. It makes a mess. I'll definitely yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe I can, I can get Dylan to play you sometime. You guys can do the cereal challenge. Yes, definitely, definitely. As long as he doesn't beat me. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's the scary thing. He's he's actually pretty pretty wicked with the darts, and and his math ability is astounding uh, because of darts. Let, let's talk a little bit about that. So, math, of course, being a huge piece of darts, you've got to be able to think quickly. You've got to subtract. You've got to do all of that really quickly in your head, um, so that you're you, you don't screw up the pace of your own play. Is math something that you enjoyed as a younger person? Uh, is is it something that you work on? Um, as, as a younger person, obviously, I've done maths all the way through school. But I, I can't say I overly enjoyed it, but I've, I've always been pretty good at it. So I've, I've got the GCSE in maths. Um, yeah, I've, I've always been decent at it. So it does, task does come in, help, uh, come in handy with it. So, yeah. Do you, do you, have you ever gotten to a point where you, you throw something and you, you miss – you know, and you miss horribly, you know, maybe it's a flyer or you, you know, you end up hitting, you're trying to hit a 19 and you hit a seven and you're like, oh crap. Have you ever had kind of a struggle there or is it just come quick? I know with some darts players, oh my gosh, the, the math ability is incredible. Yeah. I think you're, you're always going to have maybe a few moments in your career where you're going to have a little bit of a miscount only because it's sometimes more the shock of you didn't expect to hit that because you're feeling so confident at the time. We've seen Peter Wright do it, Gary Anderson doing it so frequently um but yeah if you're ever feeling like you don't know what's left just stand back take your time work it out that's why the markers there as well they're always there to help you can ask them what's left and they'll love to tell you um so yeah just take your time i say yeah and and i i would say if you're trying to get to that professional level using the marker uh you know it's it's allowed it's okay don't do it consistently because that'll show a weakness, a chink in your your armor. But if you need to, and like I think about two days ago, three days ago with Devin Peterson, uh, you know, he he he, as well as he was playing that day, he had three or four miss counts, which I think ended up count, you know, hurting him in the long run in the day. Um, and I just I wanted to bring him up. I, I was so excited to see him make the finals yesterday. I really thought it was his day to finally get that win um but gizzy just he he is who he is and and he powered through um you know have you ever been in a situation like that where you're just on fire and yet it's not exactly happening at that moment and that other person's able to push past you um yeah kind of kind of i think i get that a lot when we practice with nate um we both obviously push each other and we always get those moments, maybe if you miss that one dart in the double. Like, um, when, when after him two weeks ago, I think it was, he beat me 7-1 first game, just so missing that one-odd dart in the double. And then the next game after, I beat him 7-1, because he'd missed that maybe that one-odd dart in the double. So you, you're playing so well. We both have 100 club averages, but you're playing so well, but still can't get close, just because literally the fraction of a wire can change the whole game. So Yeah, it's a game of millimeters, definitely, for sure. Um so you've got you're in the elite. You're playing that. Do you have you know any uh, tournaments coming up, or I should say the development tour? Are there some things coming up for you guys? 
Yes, well, obviously, uh, a few local tournaments have been back uh, since COVID, which is nice. I've been playing every weekend, uh, socially distanced, of course. Um, but yeah, we've got development until next week. I'll be going down next Thursday. It starts on a Friday. So we've got three days of development tour, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and also the World Youth Championships on a Monday as well. Nice, nice. Well, and, and we're, I'll say it right now, good luck. Uh, hopefully hopefully you'll get there because there, there's a tour card or two of them kind of on the line here. Yeah, yeah. If you finish uh, top of the order of merit on development tour, you get a tour card and a World Championship spot. And also if you finish second, you still have a tour card. So nice. So there's, there's, th this is, that's a big deal. That's, that's yeah. money for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, the tour card, is that something that you're, you know, it, it, I, I know you're doing this, this next weekend. There's the opportunity to win a tour card and you, you really have the game to, to get there. Um, but if that doesn't happen for you, are you looking at going to Q school this year or maybe next year? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll 100% be doing Q school. Uh, if I wasn't to get a tour card through either development or challenge so. Uh, it's, it's, it's something I really want, um, something I've looked at since I kind of started playing, as I can imagine. Most people who play darts are something they aspire for the tour card. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's got to be the main target, 100%. So if you were to get a tour card, how do you think that would adjust your life? Now, and, and I get, you're, you're 18 years old, I don't know if you're going to university, um, but how do you think that would adjust your life? Well, it, it's, it's nice, so when you're in college one day a week, uh, doing a barbering course, uh, cut it out. So it's nice to have a little bit of freedom all the other days to get practice in. Or if I was away on a weekend, I've got a few days to recover before I go back on Thursday. So I'll definitely keep doing the college course anyway. Um, as it's nice to have something something behind me. So, so yeah. Hopefully the grass wants to kick on and I want to progress and maybe get into a top 64, then top 32, then eventually get to the very top, which would be nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that top 64 is kind of that first, first goal. Cause then you're, you're, you're solid. And then the top 32, that's, Hey, I'm making a really, you know, I'm making a decent living. And then of course the top 20 is, is yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're, you're doing school, you're, you're doing darts. How's like life like at 18 being essentially a professional darts player how has that kind of changed with friends or have, have you just grown up with the darts and all your friends are darts players? You know, there's a lot of people, including myself, that at 18, shoot, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do just for one day. Uh, yeah, I'd say the darts has changed a little bit only because it's probably one of my main priorities right now. So I'm always going to have to find time to play darts, but even the friends who I have outside of darts will always be very, very supportive of me. Uh, they always want me to succeed, so they're very understandable if I wasn't to be free on a weekend because I'm in the darts tournament. Or, but the majority of friends have got our darts players anyway, so it, it, it is nice. It is nice. Nice. Has, has it changed in the fact that people recognize you maybe more? Uh, yeah, I, I get recognized a little bit. I do get like recognized a little bit. Not as much as obviously you know, the, the top players. But I, I've done a little bit in darts so far, but it's literally only a tiny bit compared to most players, so... Yeah. Well, that's cool. I mean, that's, it's kind of fun to walk down the street and someone would be like, Hey, you know, um, curious about the picture behind you. So this, of course, you know, I believe that was the UK open. Um, you know, what's that like to have that, just that feeling of yes. I mean, can you, can you explain it? Um, like I'm not, I'm not a massive Massive celebrator, but when, when you get that little bit of re relief when you've done something and you know it, it feels good, it's, it's hard. Like, it's kind of like Gary Gary Price in a way. He's uh, he, he, sh he shows his emotion a lot, doesn't he? So it's that relief. It's like you know you've achieved something, you know you're getting there, and it just it just feels amazing. It's an amazing feeling, obviously. And with the UK Open top as well, it's just nice looking at that and thinking, wow, well, we've actually played in a PDT major and done, done bits of it as well. So. Yeah, I can I can kind of imagine on the reverse side. I played our league finals last night, and I didn't lose. I got beat. Uh, I just wasn't prepared, and I got beat. And I'll tell you, I was the reverse of that exhilaration. I was pissed. Um, so I kind of got the other side of it, you know. Um, speaking of of 
players in the stage, do you, have you thought about, okay, when I get my tour card and I make a TV stage, how your entrance is going to be? Are we going to dance it like Dimitri? You know, how's that going to look? Uh, I, I don't think it'd be as, as good as Dimitri's, maybe. I think it'd be a bit more subtle. Um, but obviously I'll, uh, I'll, I'll think more about it when it actually comes to that point. So uh, we've obviously got, yeah. we've, got, we've got counties where we have walk-ons anyway with uh, walk-on music, etc. cetera. Uh, maybe not as big as the PDC crowds, but you still get you know, hundreds or so of people there. Uh, but even that's uh, it's a bit of experience for it. Yeah, you're not practicing something like getting ready for it? Nah, I don't think so. Not yet. Not yet. We're going to see. I'll have to start thinking about it now. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. I know some people like when I was in high school that practiced their signature because they're like, hey, because I played a lot of football. Uh, they were like, no, I'm, I'm going to be in the NFL. I'm going to be a pro. And they would literally at lunchtime, they would just practice their signature the whole time. Uh, any signature practicing? Yeah, I think, I think I've done that since I was a kid anyway, but uh, obviously not, not, not for any specific reason. I can't say it's always been a good signature, but uh, I've, got, I've got a bit of practice in for it. Nice, nice. Let, let's just, um, you've had the opportunity to play some, you know, PDC players. Of course, you're, you've worked with ASP. Um, what's, uh, what's the one player that you haven't played that you would love to play? Uh, I think definitely Adrian Lewis, I think. Adrian Lewis. So I've watched him since I was a young kid. Um, always looked up to him in a way. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've met him a few times anyway at the UK Open, etc. But um, yeah, I definitely want to play him. And uh, to beat him would be amazing as well. So. Just don't get on his bad side. He's got a, a really mean right hook. So. Yeah, I'll, make sure, I'll make sure I still say social distance from him just in case. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe social distancing works really well for him. That way you can't he can't attack you. Um, you just can't upset him. Who's the player that you least want to come up against? Um, I, can't, I can't say that. I can't say it's a player I don't want to play. Uh, like that, maybe I'm scared of playing. But I, I'm not a massive fan of slow players, so maybe Justin Pike or something. Yeah, and that's a good attitude. I think any professional should be like, "Hey, I want to take anybody and everybody on. I want the challenge, you know, no matter who it is." So that's 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 a great attitude. And this great answer. I always like asking that one to see if there's someone that people are afraid of. Yeah. Um, now let's talk about old timers. And I think they, this should happen and maybe target could put it together themselves, but I want to see kind of like the champion champions tour where we take some of these players. We don't take them, but we ask them, you know, the Phil Taylors, the RVBs, um, you know, the, I would say Bristow, but of course he's not not with us anymore. But you know, even the players from the the seventies and eighties that are still around that want to to, you know, I think they should play like a five tournament type thing across the world, so people still get to see because they're still great players. Um, out of like the older guys, like Bobby George or so forth, who would be someone you would love to just play? Phil Taylor, would I definitely Phil Taylor, hundred percent. I've always I've always looked up to him anyway, so. Uh, be a player to read a meeting, never mind play against him. But that, that, that sounds like a very good idea, obviously. The old timers, so the legend, and so um, I think that'd be great. That'd be great for viewers as well. Uh, a lot of people would love to see the likes of Phil coming back and play Barney. Um, yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah, I think so. I know that they did it uh, a while back, but darts wasn't the sport that it is that we see today, where I mean, it's it's massive people across the globe, it's it's becoming soccer or football, depending on where you are. Um, I think it'd be great to have like a Legends tour. Um, yeah, Phil, here's the thing about Phil. Um, I, I think if he came back today, there would be there would be PDC players quaking in their boots. They would not like to see it because he still has game. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I, I, think, I think he definitely, um, first definitely he'd definitely be a top eight player still because like you said, the fear he's got, players don't want to play him because of what he, who he is, what he's done. Um, I, I even think it'd be poss possible for him to still win a major. So I, I'd love him to make a comeback. I would. Yeah, I think we all, to, to some degree, I think we all would. And at the same time, you're, you're like, okay, it's, it's nice that you've kind of moved on. And that's where I think having that tour comes in. So if I win the lottery, you know, or somehow I become filthy, stinky rich, I'm going to put it on and, and we'll pay these guys. Yeah. <laughs> So, hey, I just want to throw this up on there. Will Stewart does say good morning. Um, I know that you got to play in quarantine darts. 
uh, with Will and, and, and some of the, the players that he put together. What's it been like playing the virtual game? Um, it started off, obviously, it was a lot different because nobody was really used to it. So it was, it was definitely a lot different, but we had to, had to make do, had to kind of uh, take it as it comes because that's all we had at the time. So we eventually got used to it and then started really enjoying it, I think. It's nice that the likes of Will as well, he's doing an actually amazing job with the streaming. Um, obviously, it's a big help for it all, and the players are playing on the stream. Um, in front of quite a lot of viewers, you know what I mean, to get, to get a lot of viewers on it. And yeah, it's, it's good, it's good. Yeah. Do you think that the, the streaming game, the virtual game, is, is here to stay? Uh, yeah, I think it will. I think it will, even with, um, even with normal darts coming back. I think I, I generally like the online darts as it, as it was still going on. But yeah, I think it, I think it definitely will stay. So a lot of people are, uh, a lot of people are enjoying it and liking it. So I think, I think it'd be good if it did stay. Yeah, I, I have this belief that we're going to see a fracture in darts. We're going to have that in-person personal game that the PDC is putting on and then we're going to have tournaments of people that that play from their home you know or wherever they may may be set up um I think we're going to see that I I even think we're going to drift from people that are playing the virtual game will have the opportunity to go play in in person um I think that's what we're going to see yeah. uh What's your thought on the potential for cheating, though, with the streaming or virtual game? Yeah, that, that's the same thing, I suppose, because there has been a lot of, uh, well, there has been quite a lot of people who are called cheating, whether it's standing closer to the board or just claiming, claiming data are in for just like a fraction out. Um, I don't think there's actually a really a proper way around it unless, obviously, your camera quality is absolutely perfect, uh, proper close to the board where you can see everything. And I think you'd also need another camera to kind of point point at you as well to show you're not standing uh, any closer than you should be. Um, but I think it's definitely got potential and it's definitely, it's definitely at stake. Yeah, I know Will and I were talking about it and that was kind of our, uh, the, what we came up with is you, you're really going to need a two camera system and whoever's putting it on is going to need to provide um, these cameras to some degree because some players just don't have them. Um, my thought on like standing closer, I don't think is, is a benefit for anybody. Um, I think it throws your game off the way that I thought about if you were going to cheat, like for me, like last night we had our cameras on the board. I could have called up our top a player who doesn't live you know that far and been like, Hey dude, you come throw the darts and I'll pull the darts. So they're seeing me pull the darts. You know, I, that's the only way I see you having an ability to cheat uh, unless you've got a camera back on you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it, it makes sense, obviously, because I've never, I've never actually thought of that until you just said it. But uh, yeah, it, it does make sense because it's, it's totally possible to do. It's definitely possible. So unless you add another camera pointing at you, showing who's throwing the dart, I think that's the only way around it. And you don't need to yeah. Through. Yeah, and I, you know, I. So next time you're playing a virtual game, just make sure that Asp is, you know. <laughs> in town and then you guys can go back and forth and just kind of switch it off and not tell anybody. So, you know, that, that could work out. Um, it just depends on if he's on his game or not. If he's having a bad night, just sit him, just bench him. We just swap over, we swap over our <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, that's one of the things I like about soft tip, like with the grand boards and the Nexus board and so forth, there's that piece where they've, they've kind of already figured this out. You need to have two camera systems so that everybody's there's a fair play there. Soft tip, do you play that at all for fun, or you know, have you looked at playing it? Uh, I, I can't say I have actually. No, I've never, never really, never really been to it. Watch, watch a bit of it, obviously with the cricket. Uh, with like obviously it's in, it's really big over in like China, Japan, and stuff like that. Because Phil's been playing a lot as well, hasn't he? So, but um, no, I've, I've never really, never really played it. I've thrown a few darts on the soft tip board when I was uh, on holiday in Spain. But I think that's a bit of it, to be honest with you. I, 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 do like the look of it, I do like the look of it. Yeah, the segments are bigger. Just so you know, this sponsor, this sponsor you have, Target, they've got this board called the Nexus. I'm sure if you ask for one, um, <laughs> you, you could probably get one of those boards. Um, so have you done much since, you know, I'm in America. We love cricket. We, we, we decided that we would destroy anything that the UK brought over. And so instead of playing 01 games, we decided to create our own, which is cricket. Um, that's not entirely true, but somewhat. Uh, have you ever played cricket? Um, I, not, not really, not really. No, 
I, I, I do like the look of it. I do like the look of it, but I, I haven't really looked at it too much in the way of I understand it all. But I, I'd like to get into it. I would like to. I'll tell you, it's it's fun, and, and when I think about playing it, you're actually, I mean, you're practicing the triples on the biggest numbers. So you really should be setting yourself up for outs for when you have, you know, three dart outs because you're hitting the, the, the triple 20s, the 18th, the 19th, so, you know. So in a sense, it's, it's a good bit of practice. And I'll be honest, it's fun when you're playing it and you can rack up a score on someone that's just massive. Um, there is some fun to that. There's some gloating that can happen. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. I might, might, might look into it. I'll look into it a little bit more, maybe give it a go in the future. So here's what you do is you, you get into it a little bit, you play it, and then when Nathan comes over, you just – throw cricket on him and, and see if it tweaks him out. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Sounds like a plan now. Yeah. Um, so with the tour card potential, you know, that coming up, um, would you like like move anywhere? I mean, I'm not sure where you're located, but would you like say, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna move here so that I'm more in the mix of things, or would you just stay where you're at? funny you say that actually because i've moved moved house about a, about 14 months ago and i've moved near enough where the center where all the uh pro tours are played where everything is played so i've, I've literally moved in the center of it all anyway so i definitely wouldn't move from where i'm living now uh, yeah so you, you pre-planned that out so that's that's a good move yeah you can say yeah pretty much yeah. <laughs> yeah do you have any concerns like um dawson michelle who was uh on the on this show a, a while back he he gave up his tour card. He kind of walked away. It was a it was. It, he's from Canada, and of course, he came over uh, on a work visa where he can only play darts. He's away from family, younger guy, and um, it, he it just wasn't for him at the time. Now he said he's going to come back. You know, when he's a little bit older, things are a little different. Do you ever worry about you know you get into it and it's just not working for you? Um, no, I've, I've never really worried about it too much because I know you've got to make sacrifices to be where you, if you want to be a top player, you're going to have to make so many sacrifices. Like like Phil has said, he, he's given up so much, sacrificed so much of his time and sacrificed his life for that. And I think that I think I'd, be, I'd definitely be willing to do that to make sure I reach the top. So it's, it's, it's never been a main concern of mine, but I know it is tough for some other players. Obviously, if you've got family, like young children or any, anything like that, really. So it's never been one of my main worries. Nice. Um, so I've said this a little bit about MVG. Now I'm, I'm projecting you down the road, like 10 years down the road. You know, MVG's got the family situation. We saw him kill it a couple days ago in the, you know, in the Autumn League. Um, he, he did really well. He won. And then, of course, yesterday he went out first round. He's, it's been a consistency thing for him. Do you think it could be the move? To, to win more, you know, that the barrels just aren't his liking? Or do you think it's that desire to be with family? Um, personally, I think it's mostly family, and you can't blame him for it. He's just got, he's got two kids now, a uh, wife. He, you can't blame him if he wants to spend time with his family. Uh, he's, he's number one in the world anyway. He's proved, he's proved what he can do, and I think if he put his mind back to it, he could definitely get back to his best, if not get even better than that. Uh, the move to Winmo, I know obviously they're a big company as well, and they'll be supporting him and what he's doing. So I don't think that's too much of a factor. Maybe the different darts, but I think it's definitely more to do with the family. Yeah, I agree with you. I think family is is the the defining piece there. Uh, we saw it with Peter, right? You know, he came out, he was playing really well, and it was it's family that he kind of stepped a little bit back. I know his game was was not where we would think it should be at that time, and this is years ago. I mean, we're going back a ways, but. He's even said that, you know, family, I think MVG should take some time off. I know he has an exit plan, but I think he should take a, a little bit of time off and come back, and it'll be scary when he does come back. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that wouldn't be a bad idea, to be fair. Um, but obviously, I think for the likes of Ryan Gear, and I don't think he'll stick around in darts as long as like maybe Barney or Phil did. I think he would retire a lot sooner. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea if he took a bit of time out, just put the hard work in and came back and just came, came back 10 times better than where he already was, which would be scary. I don't think anyone would want to play him then. Um, but yeah, I, I, whatever he decides to do, obviously, it's his decision at the end of the day, and I think he's a top 40 player anyway. So Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, again, uh, he has an exit plan, 
you know, he came into darts with this idea that once I achieved this, um, I'll walk away. And I think it was six world titles. He said, you know, if, if I do that, I don't, I don't need to do anything else. I don't need to prove anything else. Um, do you, as you're, you're getting into the sport, do you look at playing out like the Phil Taylors, the RVP? I mean, that's, that's like 40 something years for you. Or do you say, I kind of have an exit plan. Uh, if I can achieve this, then I'm good. Um, I definitely don't have an exit plan yet. I'm going to just get into it. So I just want to play and play as much as I can, reach the top, win as much as I can, like Phil. And then just see where it goes from there, really. If I, if I want to stop playing, I want to stop playing. But for now, I just want to keep playing as much as I can and get to the top, really. How many people do you know that play darts, you know, from a professional standpoint, that, that make money from it? Uh, it, you know, it, are a lot of them still working full time jobs? I know here in America, there's not a pro, pro that's that does does that professionally that makes enough to just play darts. Everybody's got a job. Do you see that in the UK as much? Um, it's a bit 50 50, really. I know some players who, uh, maybe in the, even the top 16, like the likes of Johnny Clayton, I'm good friends with him, and I know, I know he's still working as well. Um, but yeah, I, I know some of the some of the players, maybe even lower down, like maybe just top sixty four, aren't working. But they feel like they're earning a steady wage. It's not it's not too much, but it's not not too little to live on. So I think they're just happy with that. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, I know. There's other sports like here where there are players like volleyball is really big where I'm at, and I used to be really big into volleyball. Um, and I knew a number of players that were pros, and they still had. You know, just like side jobs, but then they they did the pro thing at the same time. Um, I think that's a misconception for a lot of young players is that you're going to get pro status and someone like Target's going to throw you a hundred thousand dollars a year to live on. Yeah, um, just not the case. Yeah, I think you, you can't knock anyone if if they don't want to work. If they feel like they're earning uh, enough, then fair enough. But I think you've got to have something to fall back on anyway if something goes wrong. Uh, you're not going to reach the top straight away. Like if I was to get a tall card, I wouldn't expect to be on 152 grand, uh, 200 grand a year. You've got to start from the bottom and then work your way up. Really. Yeah. Yeah. So what's a what's a sponsorship kind of look like? And that's another question that I get a lot. Is um, you know what a sponsorship look like for a darts player? Is it just barrels? Is there money involved? Is it just entry fees, hotel? I mean, what? What's the smaller end look like? And then, of course, what is the bigger end look like? So it's, it's, it's kind of everything you just mentioned, but just for maybe like different companies or whatever. Like my management company is NXS Sports Management, um, but obviously not a darts company. It is a management company. So they manage obviously me, Nathan Aspinall, Andy Bolton, Peter Jakes, Ryan Murray. So they've got a good few tour card holders. So they'll, for me, my deal, they'll pay absolutely everything I want to do really yeah, PVC and obviously for a percentage as well but whereas with Target the, the, it's an equipment sponsor type of thing so it's the barrels the flights the board the shaft surrounds lights anything I need if I'm never short of anything they'll help me out in that sense and then the further up I go the better the dealers get as well so yeah yeah and, and I think people forget it's a business you know Target's going to sponsor and pay someone where they're going to make money you know, off of selling your barrel, they've got to make more than they're paying you or it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, they, they go out of business. Um, when it's equipment sponsorship, someone with target, and I don't know how much you can talk about specifics, but you know, you say you get equipment, but is that like a, a monthly amount or do you just call up and say, Hey, I'm, I'm you know, flights, I, I need a hundred sets. I mean, how's that work? Um, well, obviously whatever's in the contract, that's what you're going to be limited to. I'm not going to go into it too much because I know what I can and what I can't talk about. But I'm not. Going to, it's just when I was in the contract, basically, that's what you got to go with. So, but I'm, I'm very grateful for all the sponsors, the management they got. Um, very, very grateful for it all. So they're actually amazing what they do for not just myself but for everyone else as well. So. Yeah, and I totally understand. You know, you you've got a contract with them. You've you know you it's it's not right to divulge what you're getting versus someone else because then you get strife in the family. And that creates problems. Um, let's talk a little bit about social media because this is a big push for me. I'm actually, I've got two books coming out um, that are almost done. One is one is called 
the gospel of darts according to me. Um, and it's a heretical darts book. I wanted to go funny with it. Basically, it starts off where you know God, Jesus, and Phil Taylor decide we want to bring darts to the to the public. So it's kind of like that. It's yeah. supposed to be comical. Um, and then I have a book that's that's almost done, and it's social media for the darts player. How much social media um, do you do, and how much do you think really needs to be done now with this virtual world? Um, I, I like social media um, for obviously like pr promoting yourself, promoting your uh, sponsors, companies, etc. So every time I go to a darts tournament, I obviously go and always tag my sponsors and the management. Um, just obviously for a thank you to get people looking. So if one more person finds out my target, then that's another customer they got, and then so on. You know, it just builds it up from there. Yeah. Do you think that players that are trying to get sponsorship should be doing more social media? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, I think that's I, I help myself in that way because I'll always promote myself. If I do something, I'll always try and put it out there because there's always going to be someone watching. If you're doing well, someone's going to keep an eye on you. So I think it's very important because social media is massive. Anything can just blow up in a matter of 10 minutes. So I, th I think it's definitely important to promote yourself and in a good way. Uh, just promote yourself what you're doing so yeah and i like to to caution people with social media because you you know you start posting if you are looking to become a pro and you're posting stuff that's anti something or that's negative or puts yourself in a bad light you're gonna hurt yourself so you have to remember as much good as social media can do for you at the same time it can hurt you um, you know, and I've looked at a lot of pros, social media, kind of helping put this all together. And I do see that. I see people posting, um, things that are, are political, um, things that are not the best looking as far as, you know, what they may be wearing or, or the attitude that they're doing. Do you think about that when you're posting just general social media? Like, Hey, I'm, I'm out with my friends. We're out and about. Does that come into your mind yeah definitely definitely because like i said you can post something on facebook and it'll blow up within 10 minutes everyone's seen it no matter if it's good or bad but uh, it's more likely to blow up as bad because everyone's going to want to get on your back hunt you down for something wrong you've done um so yeah, you've, you've got to be very careful what you post on social media uh, even just one little thing you've always got to think before you post it and I, I i don't post anything on social media even if like only if it's about darts and seeing myself or something to do with football or soccer um, yeah, that's, that's, all I'll, that's all I'll that's all I'll post. Nothing else. But then there is people who don't think that they will post, so you've got to be very careful. Very careful. Very smart. Yeah, it's it's it it, it is, it's a career builder or a career killer yeah. for sure. What about like you know Matt Edgar, who I still want to get on this show. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his. He's doing a lot with YouTube. Any desire to kind of get into that, like videoing your journey? You're 18. You're still on this growth pattern uh, in darts. Any I, desire for that? Um, maybe, maybe not to uh, Matt's Matt's level. I know, I know he's enjoying it. I'm, I'm a big fan of his videos. I like watching him. I think he's a funny guy. Um, but I, I probably wouldn't do that myself. As much as I like to promote myself, I like keep myself to myself as much as I can as well. So I'll, I'll just get on with it, promote myself when I need to. But no, if, if people want to do that, obviously it's brilliant. Obviously, like I said, I enjoy watching his videos. I think they're very, very funny. And some, some of them you can learn stuff from as well, which is good. So. Yeah. Yeah, Matt's a, uh, he's a, he's a funny guy. I like his videos. And of course, he just signed with Loxley, which is a new brand out there. Do you keep an eye on the different brands that are available? Yeah, I think there's more and more coming every day. Like, I've never really heard of some, some new companies like Loxley. But they signed some good players. You got they got Matt, um, Ryan Searle. They got they got so many good players now. So I think it's good competition as well for all the companies coming in and trying maybe bat each other. Who's got the best players? Um, but it's a massive help for the players as well. So it's really good. Yeah, yeah. I was you know I saw that they were coming in, and I've seen some brands come in. I've seen some brands go. Um, in the creation of a barrel, it, it seems like there's constantly new barrels coming out. Do you think there's an unlimited amount of cuts you can make? I mean, are we going to get to a point where that barrel's been made before? 
Um, no idea to be honest. I actually thought I thought this the other day when uh, obviously I know Target bringing up so many new guards and their Target launches, and I just think it's crazy how they think of new designs to make all the time because I think how isn't there a dart that's like almost exactly the same or how haven't they run out of ideas yet? So it, it, it's crazy, but it's, it's it's brilliant. Like it's good. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think the machinery that they use, because it's it's not a hand and a lathe and, and stuff work. There, these are mechanical lathes. If you if you've ever watched any of the videos that Shot Darts does, uh, they're superb. They're, just, they're they're pieces of art. And this is I say this all the time in in reviews that I do. I think that what's being created nowadays are are literally pieces of art that we get to throw. Um, does your barrel is it more standard, just rings with you know some fish scale or shark scale bite to them, or are you looking for something that's got a little more artistic piece to it? Um, I've never been one of them people who goes for like um, a nice shiny, colorful dart. I've always gone plain and simple. Um, I think it just does the job, you know. What I mean, it's never been too grippy. Just I go, I, my my dart's pretty standard, um, straight barrel little bit of grip but not too much so but then there's so many new darts coming out with like colors rainbows all that stuff but i think it's amazing but i've never been one to go into that myself yeah and i've noticed that a, a lot with professional darts players they're pretty standardized there's a little tweak here or there uh, i know gary anderson added the scallop to the back of his barrel recently it's that little down area but it seems like a lot of pros just Give it to me standard. I don't need anything crazy. Um, do you see that? Yeah, pretty much. Like I said, I've always been pretty standard on myself, straight barrel, just a tiny bit of grip. Um, but I think you can throw more starts. Like if someone gave me a set of darts, they were similar to mine. I reckon I could throw them anyway. So I know some people like a change, and it's good for the like uh, Peter Wright always changes a lot. So Red Dragon, uh, they've got about four different pages just on Peter Wright darts, which is good for them because. Yeah. Everyone loves buying new sets of darts, especially when they got the color on them. It's eye catching, so it's, it's good for them. Yeah. So, um, Osti TV, um, who deals with the darts referee and a couple other people, ask, "Can I ask Louie a question?" Well, yes. Uh, type it in, and we'll we'll post it up there, and uh, uh, he'll be happy to answer it. I hope, as long as it's a good question. Yeah. Of course. So, yeah, and we are getting close to the show. So, if anybody's got questions close to the show, close to the end of the show. If anybody's got some questions, throw them out uh, and we'll we'll get through what we can. Um, so what's your hope for this upcoming? I know th the hope is to win it, uh, this upcoming you know, little bit of um, tournaments that you've got in a, in a week or so. But realistically, I mean, when you go into this, do you assume that you're going to win the tournament or are you shooting for something else? Every comp I go to, I think I, I always think you're going to win it. And I think anyone who wants to do something in darts has got to have that confidence where you know you're going to win everything. Uh, whether you win it or not, you, you've still got to think you can win it. Otherwise, I, don't, I think if you don't think you can win it, I don't think you're going to. So yeah. I think if you do think you can win it, you've got that confidence. It just gives you that little bit of edge over everyone else. So, yeah, definitely. I, th I, think, I, th I, think, I'll do, I think I'll do well. I'll do well. Yeah. I want to bring this up real quick. Just um, you're entering into this darts world. What's the thought about ladies and darts? And I know the elite one team from Target has at least two young ladies on the team. But how do you feel about <clears throat> the possibility that by the time you're really into the thick of the PDC, there's going to be five or six or maybe 10 females that you have to play? I think that'd be absolutely awesome. I don't think anyone should look at a female dart that are any different than to do a male dart because anyone can, if, if they're good enough to play darts, they're good enough to play darts. Look at Lisa, look at Sheeta, look at Fallon. Um, I wouldn't like to play them myself only because the fact they know they can play amazing darts. So I, I think it'd be absolutely brilliant for the women's game. Um, if, if they could gel together and there was more women who could be capable of competing, then I say go for it because I think it's absolutely brilliant for them. Yeah, I think it's kind of like the, the the mile, the four minute mile. You know, you go back to Chariots of Fire and the, the whole idea that no one, you know, had break in the four minute mile. And then once it happened, like that year, like 12 people did it. It was just someone getting over the edge. And we saw Lisa Ashton. She got her tour card. <clears throat> She's playing the guys. We saw Fallon, you know, um, basically uh, get, get past Teddy. 
Um, and then she Solovic, which that was huge. And then of course she she lost out to Hollywood. For some reason, I keep saying the Duza that she lost to, but it's, it was Hollywood. Um, and I mean that that propelled women's you know darts up. My thing has always been the dartboard's the same no matter who you are, what age you are, how tall you how tall you are, how fat you are, whatever your body you've got, whether you're male or female, it's a matter of throwing the dart and hitting the segment. So, yeah, I, I look forward to more women in darts uh, and, and that going. I will say this past year in the championship, you know, Teddy took a really bad rap from the crowd. What's your feeling on that? Um, obviously, I definitely feel bad for Ted. Uh, he, he was a good friend of mine anyway, and he's a lovely guy. So I, I wouldn't kind of wish that upon anyone anyway, to kind of pull off in that manner. And I know some of the things people are saying as well. Um, but I think we kind of expected it at the margin, only because it's, it's always been the same when it's been in that situation. But it, it, it's, it's not nice. I wouldn't wish on anyone really. But you got, you got to take it as it comes. And hopefully it doesn't really happen that much again. Yeah, I think, well, I'm, I'm hoping that this next World Championships, you know, coming up in a, in a few months, when the ladies get there, there's an understanding that there's a balance there, that the crowd will have grown up uh, and, and understand that everybody's got the same opportunity. Yeah, of course, definitely, exactly. exactly cool. Yeah. So, Ostie's question was, what is Q School like? But you haven't currently tried Q School. Yeah, I went uh, this year in January. I did, I did go in January. Um, it's, it's, it's different. It is different. It's tough uh, to so many players who you haven't really heard of as such, putting yourself through mean darts, absolutely amazing darts. So you, you can't underestimate anyone. That's that's what I would say. But no matter if you've heard of them or not, you can't underestimate anyone. Yeah. And I understand that a reasonable percentage of players that are at Q School are past professional, PDC professional darts players that are trying to get their card again. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's so, so many of them. Um, if you get the likes of Wesley, uh, so many more as well. Not, you've got the likes of the top EVO players trying to come over. Uh, so there's loads of well known names, but even the names that you haven't heard of, you still can't underestimate them because they're so good as well. So it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough few days, but I'm not going to probably doing it again before I need to get my card next week or from Challenge Show. Yeah, and it's not the name you're playing, it's the board you're playing. So that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. So um, the last question here. Um, and this comes from uh, Joe. Do you have a nickname for when you get your tour card? I haven't. I haven't actually yet. Uh, my management put on Facebook not so long ago. Uh, keep any suggestions. So if anyone has got any, don't, uh, feel free to comment or send them in because I'm, I'm I'm trying to look for myself. I just can't think of can't think of I can't decide on them. So guys, if you've got suggestions, post them here or you know let. Uh, Louie, know you can find him, of course, on Facebook and social media and just let them know what you think a good nickname is. I do want to touch really briefly on management. So you're 18, and of course you're throwing really good darts, so a management company makes sense. But that, again, uh, being a, a top question, you know, probably top five questions that I get asked, when should someone look at a management team? Whenever you're ready, really. I would think if a, manager's, if a management's interested in you, I think they'll feel like you're ready. Um, but if you don't feel like you're ready, if you feel like you can do something on your own, then that's it. That's it. Go for it. So there's no, uh, there's no pressure. There's nothing saying you have to get a management. But I'm, obviously, like I said, I can't thank mine enough because he does a lot for me and I like, like the practice of my nerves as well. Um, yeah, he, he's awesome. I, I can't complain about my management. But if nobody feels ready to get one, then there's no need to rush into it. Yeah, I think it's kind of a, a, a mixed bag because I've talked with a couple of managers for some players that uh, are coming up on the show. And uh, I've, I've heard that certain players are pulling back and managing themselves. Uh, even big name PDC players that have said, hey, I, you know, I've learned through this COVID situation that I can manage myself. And so I think we've got a, a mixed bag in that situation. I think it's kind of the management team doesn't make you a better darts player and they don't necessarily, um, you know, make you into anything. You've got to do that. The management team's there to, to help facilitate things and maybe help with contracts, but they're not going to make you a darts player. So you need to do that yourself. Exactly. At the end of the day, your hard work has to come down to you. 
Uh, obviously, my management's there to guide me in the right way, and they do absolutely everything for me. That's why I feel grateful for it. But I still got to do the work myself. Nobody can do it for me. So, yeah. Definitely. Well, hey, Louie, it's been a pleasure to have you on. I'm going to do this thing where we land the plane. Um, and like I, I like to say, we kind of bring this in. Um, it's been a, a pleasure. Um, yeah, I'm going to pull you off screen real quick, and then I'm just going to close out the show. But before I do that, uh, if people wanted to find you on social media, where can they find you? Um, on Facebook as Louie Williams, and also Instagram as Louie Williams, and Twitter is at Williams Louie. All right. Which one do you spend more time on? Twitter? Um, all, all three, really. All three. I post on all three. So whatever, whatever's easy to spend on. Right. Well, good luck. And everybody, go follow Louie. Um, you know, follow his career. He's 18 years old. So, I mean, he's definitely got plenty of years of darts ahead of him. Hopefully, we'll get to see him win a world championship at the same time. Um, so good luck in the, in the next week or so. Uh, as that goes, hopefully, you'll get your tour card. And hopefully we'll see you at the World Championships this year by winning uh, the Youth Worlds. So thanks again, Louie. Uh, I'm going to pull you off real quick and do the the, the closeout here. And uh, guys, don't forget, help Louie out with a nickname. we got to come up with something really cool for him. All right, thanks. Cheers. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Coffee and Darts with Louie Williams. He is a Target Elite player. Uh, uh, just a young man that's up and coming and really excited personally to watch his career as he grows. Very thankful for him to come on the show. Do help him out. If you got a cool nickname that's going to work for Louie, uh, I think you should you know post that up on his page uh, or here, and I can get it over to him as well. want to let you know that um, we had Darren Young coming on the show tomorrow, but Darren has let me know he's not going to be able to make the show. He's not feeling too well, so we're going to postpone that out. Keeping a lookout, Monday, we're going to have uh, Mr. Long from Canada. Jim Long uh, is going to be on the show. It's going to be an evening show. It'll be at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then later in the week on Saturday morning, we're going to have Danny Luby here uh, on the show as well. So that'll be Saturday morning, the 26th. And then Monday afternoon or late evening or early evening, uh, Jim Long will be on the show. So that's for next week. Thank you all for watching this episode. Again, don't forget to check out Shot Darts at ShotDarts.com. Uh, they do have some new barrels coming out in uh, regards to their 50th anniversary and magic wear for all your jersey needs. Thanks again, guys. I will see you on the next show, which is going to be Monday. And I might be sneaking a show in now between Monday just to do a Q&A. So if that pops up, hop on, do some Q&A. See you guys later. Thanks for watching.